from your local news channel. Live at 11 starts right now. A dramatic new video tonight. A truck drives right into a Santa Barbara laundromat and police say the driver was trying to hit someone. It's our top story tonight at 11. Good evening, everybody. I'm CJ Ward in for Scott Hennessy. That violent incident happened at the Mesa laundromat in Santa Barbara. You can see the truck driving into the building and shattering the glass, causing a man inside to fly across the floor. It's not known why the driver of the truck was trying to hit the man, but police believe the driver and the man are acquaintances. Bystanders saw the commotion and tried to detain the driver until police could arrive on scene. Instead, the driver backed up into one of the other bystanders as well. To see this happen, it's shocking. Um, you don't see this in Santa Barbara that often. And when we got a call, then we were just hoping that the, nobody got hurt. And the man driving the truck was arrested and now faces charges for assault with a deadly weapon and attempted murder. Neither man knocked to the ground was seriously hurt. Police say the driver was not under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Santa Barbara County's new indoor mask mandate took effect tonight. That order applies to everybody, regardless of your vaccination status. News Channel reporter Blake Devine stopped by State Street tonight to find out what people there think about it. A new mask mandate is underway in Santa Barbara County, and this means masks must be worn no matter where you are inside. But business owners such as Aaron Ashland wonder why this new rule took effect at 5 p.m. on Fiesta Friday. Why 5 o'clock on Friday? Like, but before this, we couldn't save lives. Like, if it was that big of a deal, right? What about yesterday? Day before? Two days? Like, we, we, shouldn't we have started this mask thing a couple days ago? Tonight, there were plenty of people out and about on State Street. Although Ashland believes that Fiesta festivities have been dimmed down. It sure seems like there's less people out leading up to this. This is definitely the worst Fiesta I've ever seen. Like, there's nobody out. This new mask mandate comes as county health experts continue to track a dramatic increase in Delta cases. I'm very comfortable with that. We want to protect our kids and, you know, our other people around us. Local health leaders also say the county is not where it needs to be in terms of vaccinations against the virus. I think it's uh, what we need right now and we need everyone to get vaccinated so that we don't have to wear our masks. Many businesses are handling this mask mandate in different ways, but here at Holdren's, they're afraid that they'll have to police patrons. It puts a lot of pressure on us small business owners to enforce rules that we didn't really sign up for. On a night usually filled with fun, Holdren fears that his business may be going backwards. It's really difficult to run a business in this environment because it seems like the rules change weekly. In downtown Santa Barbara, I'm New Channel reporter Blake Devine. We also got reaction from folks at the YMCA in Santa Maria today. You can see that more equipment has been moved outdoors. Some of the members we spoke with today are frustrated with the return of the mask mandate. Managers at the Y have been preparing for this day, but they too have mixed feelings about all of it. And it's disrespectful to me that I can't do the things I want to do. I can't travel, I'm old, but I have a shot. We know we're on the home stretch of this pandemic. We know people are weary. We are too, and we want to be part of the solution. A Seaford says the good news is crews have put more exercise equipment outdoors where you do not have to wear a mask. Santa Barbara City College does an about face on vaccination requirements. SBCC approved a vaccination mandate for its students, employees and visitors. The college's board of trustees approved the plan yesterday with a six to one vote. Anyone on campus will need to be fully vaccinated by October 1st or earlier if a vaccine receives final FDA approval before then. Now, people on campus who have an approved exemption based on medical disability or religious beliefs will only be allowed on school property if they wear an N95 mask and get a COVID test every week. A 25 year tradition in downtown San Luis Obispo was put on hold last summer due to the pandemic. But as Reed Harmon reports, the music and the community are back together again. They can hear you. You want more? Downtown Slow has slowly found their rhythm once again. After a year of cancellations and postponements, a San Luis Obispo tradition continues on this summer. 
our 15 months, we postponed the 2020 season to 2021, and we really waited until that June 15th. Um, we took our bands from last year and were able to bring them to this year, and all of our vendors were really happy to start it over. So overall, really excited. The concert in the Plaza series is exciting for the ones who run the event. Overall, a huge excitement. I mean, it's a tradition in summer for San Luis Obispo, and everyone's really proudful that it's coming back. And the ones who have been waiting for the event to return. I've been locked down for over a year. No, no. Open doors. Let's go. Who's playing? Let's go. <laughs> the concert in the Plaza series will be every Friday filled with food, drinks, and of course, live music. It'll be here until September 24th. At least that's the hope. We definitely have a contingency plan, so as the weeks progress, it could change, but for right now, that's what we're planning to do. We haven't uh, moved it in a while, so we're going to move it today. In San Luis Obispo, I'm News Channel reporter Reed Harmon. Our Lady of Guadalupe Church on Santa Barbara's east side is moving ahead with its modified fiesta plans. The crowds are smaller, but the homemade food is still delicious. Organizers came up with plans to follow the new mask mandate. Everyone must wear a mask except while eating and drinking. Workers are sanitizing tables and keeping the tables and the chairs and the food lines spaced out to encourage distancing. And everyone is hoping for a safe and a fun weekend. Keeping in mind the health concerns, uh, we've done all that we can to uh, protect people's health and uh, provide for their safety. We weren't going to not do anything, and so everybody started talking about uh, Guadalupe, so it's the first time for me, even though I live here, and uh, just had to do it. Had to come and do it for Fiesta. And church organizers say they kept the festival to make up for the money they had already spent trying to set it up. This event was open until 10 o'clock tonight. They'll be back out there on Saturday and Sunday. Just please remember to bring your mask. A special marketplace is open for Fiesta close to where the downtown Mercado would have been. 40 vendors are at the Mujeres Makers Market. They normally set up on Milpas Street. They sell handmade items, vintage goods, beauty products, and one-of-a-kind finds. The sellers here are all women. And you have three options this weekend to watch the Fiesta Pequena coverage from Wednesday night. Get your DVRs ready tomorrow, Saturday. The Fiesta dancers can be seen starting at 10 o'clock in the morning on News Channel 3. The program runs about an hour and 10 minutes, so please be sure to record at least that long. On Saturday night, Pequena will air again at 7 o'clock on Channel 3. Then on Sunday, we'll air Pequena on Fox 11 starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's when um, it's going to be Saturday. News Channel 3, Sunday, our sister station, Fox 11, if you want to see it on TV. All right, Julia Espinoza is keeping a close eye on the forecast for us. She's in the First Loop Weather Center, and we have the fog rolling in tonight. Yes, finally getting to enjoy from that much needed marine layer now extending its way out towards those inland areas. So as we take a live view from the harbor of Santa Barbara right now, still getting good visibility out there. It's just some patchy fog and mostly cloudy skies. Santa Barbara checking in at 58 degrees over the central coast. Temperatures are cooler. We're in the mid 50s for Santa Maria, Lompoc at 56 and then down into Ventura. You're checking in at 58 degrees along with Oxnard. So temperatures feeling pretty mild for this time of day. As we take a look at our winds, they are no longer a concern as they were the last couple of nights, not seeing a wind advisory, and this aid is aiding towards that marine layer. So thick clouds right alongside the central coast, a little less of that activity further down south. However, this activity is going to continue to build. So a heads up to any nighttime commuters or even into the morning. However, this activity leading to a cooling trend, and we're going to be talking all those details coming up shortly. CJ, back to you. All right. Thank you, Julia. We will likely know next week if a convicted killer will be brought into San Luis Obispo to testify in a hearing for Paul Flores and his father Ruben. They're charged in the death of Kristen Smart 25 years ago. News Channel reporter Keith Carls has more on what the hearing and how it could lead to a full-blown trial. The first week of the hearings ended with a stunning announcement from the Flores defense team. They say they will seek testimony from Scott Peterson, 
who they say knew Kristen Smart while both were students at Cal Poly before her disappearance. Scott Peterson is in state prison for his murder conviction in the death of his wife Lacey and their unborn child. It remains unclear how and when Peterson will testify in the Flores preliminary hearing. Defense attorneys questioned why investigators didn't pursue other potential suspects who had links to Kristen Smart and why they focused only on Paul Flores as the prime suspect. Paul Flores is believed to have been the last person to be with Kristen Smart before she disappeared. One observer of the Flores prelim we spoke with says the foundation has been laid by both the prosecution and the defense for a future jury trial. You know, I've often talked to state uh, uh, district attorneys or assistant district attorneys and say, why do you use this lengthy process with a preliminary hearing? Why don't you use what the feds use, which is the grand jury? And every one of them has told me to test our case, to test our evidence, uh, see how, how good it is. In Santa Maria, Keith Carls, Fox 11 News. Still ahead, a promising July jobs report, but a warning from the president. Plus, more people living in Northern California escaped the flames. The Dixie Fire is now the largest active wildfire in the country. More on that coming up. Body cam video from the San Diego Sheriff's Department shows the shocking moment a deputy begins to overdose on fentanyl. Deputy David Fivey was field testing a white substance he and his partner had just seized. And you can see the moment he's exposed and then collapses. Video shows his partner jump into action, administering Narcan nasal spray until paramedics arrive on scene. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid 50 times more potent than heroin. The Sheriff's Department says it released this video in hopes of bringing awareness to show just how dangerous the drug is, as exposure to even just a few grains can be deadly. Well, schools are starting to open up across the state. Governor Newsom discussed the safe reopening of schools for in-person instruction today. He toured first and fourth grade classrooms at an elementary school in San Bernardino before making remarks about the state's investments in education and emphasized the support that students will need. We're getting all our kids safely back into in-person instruction and we're doing it in a sustainable way. We don't want to do it in an episodic way. We want to do it in a safe way where these kids can get that full support. The governor also highlighted California's comeback plan, which includes nearly $124 billion in pre-K and K-12 through funding to the state's public schools. The Dixie Fire reduced yet another Northern California community to ashes. As Jonathan Vigliotti reports, it's the biggest wildfire burning in California and the state's third largest fire ever on record. In less than 24 hours, the Dixie Fire wiped the historic gold rush town of Greenville and nearby Canyon Dam off the map. This is what the fire looked like Thursday night on the road to Canyon Dam. Everything, trees, cars, homes in flames. Now other Northern California towns are threatened and there are more evacuations. The fire goes over Kitty Ridge, then we, then we will leave. If all signs point to it's coming here, you're ready to get out of here. Right, if we see flames, we're gone. <laughs> in Chester, this mother of three and her family left with only the bare essentials. Frozen food and um, pictures and paperwork. We'll be okay, they'll get new toys and everything. Uh, but it's just memories. So far, crews have been able to protect Chester. And we're standing in front of what used to be a general store. The smoke here is so thick at times it looks like night. Officials here believe this fire is going to continue to burn for several weeks. I've been fighting fire for almost 25 years, and this is the most extreme fire behavior that I've ever been a part of. The Dixie Fire has scorched territory bigger than Los Angeles. A lot of smoke, a lot of haze, can't really see over the valleys and stuff. Smoke from the Western wildfires is pushing into the Bay Area and was seen as far east as Salt Lake City, Utah. Jonathan Vigliotti, Canyon Dam, California. 
All right, let's bring back Julie Espinoza. She's in the First Foot Weather Center. They were just talking about how the, the smoke was going east, but now it's going to start heading toward us. Yeah, it's really sporadic when it takes when we start to take a look at this map. Now, the fires burning over northern California is going to be shifting some of, uh, out towards the east, but it's also heading our direction as well, as you are seeing much of the plume of smoke just pushing down towards the south, and it eventually makes its way into some of our backyards as we go into tomorrow. So breaking it down even further, here's a look as to what we're experiencing going into your Saturday morning areas northeast of San Luis Obispo County and maybe even the mountains over Santa Barbara County. We're starting to see much more of that extreme air into our area. Now all of us are going to be impacted when it comes to our air quality. As you can see, future air quality is now uh, lowering down to about moderate activity for all three counties from San Luis Obispo all the way down into Ventura County. So this is the activity that is going to be a common story for much of our Saturday heading towards those afternoon hours. And it's not until your late Saturday where we start to enjoy from that that nice easy air back into our area much more green and then we are in the clear as we go into your Sunday morning. But of course following this map this activity could be changing all dependent on the wind direction as well as the fire that continues to burn. So as far as your future cast winds it is nice that by the time we head towards your late afternoon those winds are picking up southwesterly over northeast San Luis Obispo County and that's the push that we need to really push out all of that smoke from our area. Once we go into your Sunday morning we're back to those calm winds and the good news out of the activity moving forward is a cooling trend. So our ridge of high pressure is shifting more out towards the east and for us we're going to start this onshore flow. As it continues to strengthen everyone wakes up to the morning fog creating those overcast skies and then it's going to be gradually clearing away to sunshine. For most areas if you are alongside some of those beaches it could be slower clearing where it just becomes hazy sunshine for much of your afternoon and then temperatures also falling below average by your Sunday. So walking you through this model here's a look at your future fog report. If you're waking up and starting off your day early Saturday morning. We're going to be seeing poor visibility from the central coast down towards the south coast. And then you also want to consider that poor to moderate air quality that we're going to be dealing with, especially for any respiratory issues or asthma. It could be quite tricky as you take on your Saturday. By the time we get towards your late Saturday and into your Sunday, an even stronger marine layer. So into your Sunday morning, very chilly temperatures to start off your day. Air quality should have improved, so by then it should be a nicer day to enjoy from any outdoor activity. And this pattern lasts all the way into our Monday. So here's a look at your weekend forecast. If you are in Santa Barbara, we're going to be starting off in the upper 70s, Santa Maria mid 70s, and then cooler out into Ventura. Heading towards your Sunday, knocking off just a couple degrees, and overall coastal areas will be in the 60s to the 70s. Here's a look at your daytime highs into your Saturday. Santa Barbara experiencing 78 degrees, Goleta feeling mild at 75, Carpinteria 74 degrees, and another good news moving into the weekend is that tomorrow we're not tracking that sundown or wind event, so it should make for a nice calm evening. Builtin tomorrow, you're experiencing 85 degrees. Vandenberg 71 heading out towards Morro Bay. It is going to be feeling quite cool at 60 degrees and then that huge micro -clim climate change into Paso about uh, 20 to 30 degrees warmer at 96 as we go towards your Saturday's daytime high. Paso will be warm at 89. Ventura, you're looking at 72. The cooling trend persisting into the start of our work week and then for the later half of the week, we start to experience that ridge of high pressure really redefining developing and then bringing us that gradual warming trend back into our area. Nonetheless, Santa Maria, we're staying in the 70s for the next seven days to come. And then for Ventura, we'll be ranging in the upper 60s to low 70s. That's your forecast. More news after this. The U.S. added nearly one million jobs in July, beating expectations. The Labor Department announced hiring grew last month. 943,000 jobs were added and the unemployment rate fell to 5.4%. And while that's good news for a recovering economy, President Biden warned if the Delta variant is allowed to rage out of control, it could cut into months of progress. The Biden administration is extending the pause on student loan repayments. The president released a statement today saying there is more work to do in the economic recovery from COVID-19. And for that reason, student loan payments are on hold through January 31st, 2022. The pandemic relief benefit was set to expire on September 30th after a 19 month extension. Uh, this pause on payments and the interest waiver are automatic, but only apply to federally held loans. Still ahead live at 11, a pro basketball player gives back to the community with a youth camp in Goleta. Sports is next.
Volunteers with Adams Angels are at it again, helping folks in the community, especially during the hot summer days. And you might have noticed some new angels in the mix. A group of kids from around the country are spending their summer volunteering. They met up Thursday afternoon at Alameda Park, packing up and distributing food and necessities to those in need. And they brought in this new group. Some of them have never even been to the ocean, so we really appreciate them. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you back here on Monday.